Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest Focus IR CEO interview. Green Rock Mining are keen to develop a downstream processing plant to process their own battery quality flake graphite from the 100% owned Amatsok mine in southern Greenland. The company have just published the results of a CSPG processing plant feasibility study and CEO Stefan Bernstein joins me to put the study in context. Welcome, Stefan. Thank you, Donald. It's great to have you on again. It's great to be here. Great. Okay, now, cracking on. Green Rock have just published the feasibility study results for a CSPG processing plant project. What did the study conclude? And could you take us through the financial highlights, please? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is uh, this is a really brilliant result that we have from the uh, from the feasibility study. It shows a positive NPV pre-tax of uh, more than eight hundred million uh, US, eight hundred thirty-seven million to be precise, at an internal rate of return of thirty-three point eight percent. So really good. And after-tax NPV, which of course is depending on where we put the plant eventually. Um, that is at uh, 545 million US at an uh, internal rate of return of 25.3%. So really, really good and positive numbers. So this is based on 22 years of uh, production uh, to match also the production that we see up at the Amateur Graphite Mines. Okay, the initial capital costs are estimated at 321 million, yet the projected gross profit is 2,785 million over those 2022 years you mentioned, with a four year payback, a four year payback from the start of production. So, this is a highly commercial uh, project you're developing here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, uh, the, uh, the total gross revenue is uh, more than 6 billion US over the 22 year period. So, of course, it testifies to the uh, economic robustness of uh, doing this downstream processing. It does indeed. Now, uh, the study uh, projects turning 80,000 tonnes of graphite concentrate from Amitsok and turning it into 39,700 tonnes of active anode material. How much might that processed graphite be worth at today's market rates on a, on a yearly basis? Yeah, so on a yearly basis, that's uh, about 300 million US per year. Crikey, and, that's a serious uh, that's- number. Yeah, it is, and it's uh, it's in sufficient uh, battery grade graphite to supply a million cars with batteries. Ah, that's a, also a, a substantial number. So you you could be a big player in the marketplace. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean that that number is equivalent to uh, the entire UK production of cars if they were all electric. And the fact that Green Rock own their own source of battery grade graphite and are vertically integrated, that's a huge commercial advantage, isn't it? Oh, uh, in many ways. Um, first of all, it takes away uh, some of the risk for the fluctuating raw material prices, um, as the pricing of the end product seems to be steady and at very high level, as opposed to uh, the, the upstream raw materials. It also secures the supply of a, a feedstock graphite concentrate of consistent quantity and consistent quality. So there's no le- uh, need for lengthy calibration processes because, you know, you receive new shipments from new providers and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, CSPG, or coated spherical purified graphite, is a key component of all lithium batteries. Yet 90% of processed graphite currently comes from China. Could you talk us through the supply and demand constraints as, as, as you're seeing in the, in the marketplace at the moment, Stefan? Yes. Uh, I mean, we'll be seeing uh, about a fourfold increase, that is 400% increase uh, in the demand for battery-grade graphite over the coming decade. And that's driven, uh, of course, by the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the car, the automotive industry from the, in the EU, but also in North America. But foremost, that of China, uh, that is currently seeing the, the biggest increase in production of electric vehicles. And there's also the restrictions in, uh, in, in China that were put in place in December last year to, uh, on, on export of uh, battery grade graphite. So, you know, having our own um, supply of, uh, of, uh, of graphite is certainly a, a way also to secure some of the supply chains. Uh, I will also say that uh, the fast, uh, uh, there's a fast-growing and somewhat neglected demand for ESS, that is energy storage systems, uh, which are like stationary batteries that are used for solar energy farms, for instance. 
So all of this speaks into a, a steady, uh, growing demand for, for graphite. Okay, let me take you back to the feasibility study. It was produced by several firms with expertise in the field and supported by a £250,000 grant from the UK's Automotive Transformation Fund. Could you give us a brief overview of the processes required to turn Amexalt graphite concentrate into battery-ready uh, CSPG, please, Stefan? Yes, absolutely. And uh, first, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank uh, Inno Innovate UK and the Automotive Transformation Fund for making this uh, feasibility study uh, possible for us. Um, and the 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 process to turn amytoxic graphite concentrate into the uh, the active anode material is so that the graphite concentrate needs to be firstly reshaped into minute, minute uh, rounded particles that are then purified uh, from 90, say 95% purity to better than 99.95%. And then finally it's coated uh, and baked until you, and then you have your active anode material. Okay, thank you very much for that. So a fairly complex uh, process. It's, it's complex, you see? Yeah. Ah, so there's, there's a lot of science involved. Well, it's more like uh, engineering, I would say. Uh, the science has been done a long time ago. I mean, I mean these, uh, these lithium-based batteries have been in production now for more than 20 years and, uh, and uh, show how uh, you know, in incredible performance we, we understand what's behind a good quality anode material. So, so, it's, so it's mostly an engineering uh, challenge in terms of putting all the, the right uh, uh, manufacturing um, uh, units together. When you look at the feasibility study, it's clear that the, 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 there's quite a high margin uh, available further up the supply chain. Uh, is, is that a, a correct assumption? That is, uh, that is indeed correct. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why, of course, we are engaging in this uh, because we want to catch that higher margin uh, that is uh, associated with the with the processing part. But it's actually something you see in many other uh, businesses, for instance, for instance, the, the food industry, uh, where the uh, where the the farmer, uh, of course, gets uh, some income from the milk he produces but uh, you know the 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 cheese uh, produce their producers fine french cheese uh, probably get a, a a better margin okay that's a good that's a, that's a good analogy so the point of the next steps here uh, is it time for a definitive feasibility study for the processing plant and are you already thinking about where the plant might be built yes it is uh, about time we need to uh, set up a pilot processing plant first that, that is a, a, a full size plant but much smaller in the sense that it has fewer units uh, associated with it but uh, that is to to test out some of the uh, some of the uh, elements of the processing um that can be uh, that can take place uh, this fall and early next year and then we expect to start a definitive feasibility study say a year from now and have that finalized by end of 25 and at that time we you know should be ready for for construction um, and uh, with re regard to the, the sites, we are looking at various places. Uh, Northern Europe comes to mind, of course, uh, mainly because of the uh, one of the critical elements of the processing plant is the need for energy, electrical energy. And so, of course, we would like to have access to CO2 uh, emission-free energy, and it has to be close to a port. So Northern Europe uh, seems to be uh, the right place. Ah, so green green electricity is uh, key f key for the project. Very important, very important. Okay, now uh, in terms of financing, you recently signed a letter of interest for up to three and a half million uh, US dollars with the US government's Exim Bank. Uh, might that be available to fund the DFS in a year's time, as you as you noted? And likewise, the EU is keen on sourcing critical materials from Greenland. Are those two different uh, sources of funding uh, available to you? Would you say? Uh, uh, they are indeed, and um, and in fact, they they don't uh, exclude each other. Uh, they might uh, work in tandem. The uh, Exim Bank uh, letter of interest uh, is an invitation for us to uh, apply for uh, loans that can um, be put in place to uh, support services provided by U.S. Uh, service providers. For instance, uh, companies, consultancy companies, that uh, conduct DFS for us. So that's. 
great. Um, also, the uh, Critical Raw Materials Act for the EU is now uh, finally decided. New strategic projects will be announced, or a call will be announced later this month. We ex- certainly expect to 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 apply for for becoming a strategic project. Uh, and then the EU has uh, has pledged to put in place um, um, financial measures to help these projects uh, become real. Uh, one of the things that's happening uh, concrete is that the uh, European Battery Alliance is uh, assembling a 500 million euro fund to support the upstream uh, supply of uh, of uh, uh, raw materials for the battery industry in Europe. So obviously, it will be a really good candidate for that. Uh, my failed question to Stefan, why should Green Rock Mining, uh, ticker Grok, be on any investor's watch list right now? Well, I mean, Green Rock is firmly set to now become a key European producer, if not the first European producer of battery-grade graphite, which is a strategic raw material. And uh, this position is now backed by two positive economic studies. There's the preliminary economic assessment of the upstream Amitok mine, and now the feasibility study of the downstream processing plant. And above all, these are solidly funded on the world-class grades and quality of the Amitok deposit in Greenland. Stefan Bernstein, CEO of Green Rock Mining, thank you very much indeed for talking us through the results of the feasibility study uh, uh, for the proposed CSPG processing plant. Thank you uh, once again. For more company information and to access the company bulletin board, please go to the Green Rock pages of London Southeast. And meanwhile, do follow us on Twitter. That would be at underscore focus IR underscore and at London Southeast or register London Southeast YouTube to receive alerts to our next Green Rock Mining interview. All that remains for me to do now is to thank you for watching. Thank you very much indeed. Mm-hmm.